Hey everyone, it's Robin and welcome to my desk. It's Sunday afternoon, um, March 19th, and it's been a gloriously sunny but chilly day here in Minneapolis. I hope that you've enjoyed your weekend. They always go by so, so fast. Um, so I thought that I would just pop on real quick and update you on a few things, um, tell you that I'm a big fat liar and explain why, talk to you a little bit about um, some new journal covers or notebook covers that I have gotten this past week. I wanted to share with you my top pens in each brand that I own, like my favorites out of out of each brand. And then I wanted to address a question that was posted today <clears throat> on another YouTube video from long ago. I did a video on my all-star collection and somebody was asking specifically about the color of the purple black. So I wanted to try to give some information about that. So this is my third time filming this video. Um, I do not like to edit videos and currently don't intend to do video editing. Um, I'd just rather film a video three, four, five times, I guess. Um, that is just total insanity, but that's how I roll. So without further ado, let's just get into it, all right? Stop and just talk about the things. I am late to get on the bus with the hand stitch leather tee um, notebook covers, probably because it's challenging to find the shop open for me. <laughs> Maybe I just don't have the time and availability currently to catch it at the right time. Um, but I was, I was looking to perhaps get a new A5 cover. I ordered one from Galen Leather. I wanted a new cover for my my journal that I just kind of do daily brain dumping in. Um, I've, I've used this A5 size in and out of rings for many, many years and have settled on. Notebooks are my preference. I have a couple of leather covers that I was using, one non-leather Filofax cover that I was using, and I was content until I wasn't content anymore. And I decided that I wanted another, I wanted a new new cover for this book was going to wait and get a new one and then this one popped up on facebook it is pre-loved it is gorgeous it is soft it is squishy it is scarred it is full of pockets and i really didn't need the pockets but they don't bother me any look at all these markings these cool markings that this hide has um i couldn't be happier with this notebook cover um, it has, it might be an older one. This might not be available anymore. I believe the color is tobacco. Um, it's got a little mini secretarial in the front. It has my notebook in it. Um, and it, the notebook just slides into the slip pockets on the front and back cover. And then in the back, it has this kind of, um, elongated secretarial pocket which I think is kind of a cool thing and on the cover it says stitch instead of H S L T on it on the newer ones I believe that's what it said so I think it might be an older cover I don't know I don't care um it's just so soft and smooth and buttery and squishy and I just want to hug it and um touch it a lot very happy with this purchase. Really great price. And I kind of like the idea of buying things pre-loved and um, just not, you know, buying buying new things all the time. So i um, happy to give this one a new home. Love it. Loved it so much that when this one popped up on Mercari, this is a week's cover, I was not looking for a week's cover. I was perfectly content carrying my week's book without a cover on it, just the clear cover on cover, because I enjoy seeing the bunnies on the cover. Um, this one popped up on Mercari at what I think is a pretty fair price. Um, I'm, I don't know how much these sell for new out of the shop um, and then plus shipping. Um, 
but I decided to give it a try. It intrigued me because I thought that perhaps this color, which I, oh crap, I can't remember what the color name is again, and it's going to take me a red hot minute to look it up. Um, I thought that this color would be um, close to undyed. It's not. Um, this will get a nice golden brown color. I believe that this is going to stay kind of cover girl taupe. Um, so I'm not really a fan of the cover. I don't mind it. It's neutral enough to not really bother me a whole lot. I like that it's a different color on the inside. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really like the simplicity of this. I like that it's got, um, a smaller footprint than the, uh, Giulio Apunto, Slim Apunto has. Um, so I'm just giving it a whirl. Uh, more or less to see if this is something that I'd want to order from the shop. And it may or may not be. I'm not sure. The verdict is still out. I don't mind this. I'm enjoying it for the moment. But that makes me a big liar because I said that I wasn't looking for any more journal covers. I was content. And yeah, that's not the case, apparently. Okay, so that's my... That's new as far as leather things are concerned on my desk. Um, let's switch over to answering a question that was posted on one of my older videos um, just this morning. And although this is the third time that I'm filming this and I had plenty of opportunity to go back to my YouTube videos and figure out what the name of the person that asked the question on that older video was, I neglected to do it three times. So I am so sorry if that was you. You are wonderful. You are awesome. You have a name. I just didn't look it up um, to, to say it on the video, but I will look it up when I post it and I'll put the link on there. I The question was about the color of the um, purple black Lamy All Star. They were asking whether the color was closer to a warm kind of a deeper, just a more saturated, vibrant pink, or if it was more in a cool purple family. So I gathered some um, scrapbook paper in purples to do a comparison and a couple of pens to compare. And without any further ado, here are the purples or purple family that I own. This one is the purple black, this is the vibrant pink, and this is the new violet, I believe it's just like me to not be prepared. I knew that I didn't know the name of it the, the last time that I filmed this and I didn't look that up again either. So, but this is the one that just came out in March of 2023 and I think it's just violet. Um, so here are those three all-star colors and I said that I would try to move them very close to my camera and it's probably getting blurry. I hope that that's halfway decent. But what I think is more telling is I'm going to throw in this Twisby Eco here. This is not the um, glow-in-the-dark purple. It's just the regular purple Eco, Eco, not Eco T. Um, and I'll plop it over there for a comparison if you have that one to look at. You can see that clearly this is cooler. This is definitely warmer. Um, then I thought that I would show them against some purple scrapbook paper. I have two cool toned purple blue that, that lean to the blue and a couple of purples that lean to the red. And what I think this purple black works the best with or lines up with the best is this maroon colored paper. Um, so to answer your question in a nutshell, I would say that this is definitely a warm purple color. It's not aubergine. Um, it doesn't have that deepness to it. Um, I I would agree with the link that I provided you and say that this sits closest to a maroon. So I hope that was helpful. Um, do a search on on the internet for all Lamy All Star covers and colors, and you will find a bunch of videos where people have like I had in my video, they'll have photographs of all the different colors and groups, color groupings together for you to look at and compare. I think that that's probably a really great, um, a really great resource. And hopefully the one that I, that I included, you could click on and I hope it helps. Okay. 
the last thing that I wanted to do today, I'm just zooming through this now. The third time, man, I've got it down. The third thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is um, my favorite pens, my favorite fountain pens that I have in my, I, I would say that I border, I, I'm definitely a fountain pen user. I don't officially collect fountain pens because they are all out of the box and are all fair game to be used. Um, so out of all my fountain pens, which are the favorites from each of the different um, companies or makers? So um, that's kind of the trend that I've been on lately. I've been not leaning excitedly towards, again, they've got another new uh, Twisby Eco color coming out. And I am going to be really contemplating hard whether I want to add another Twisby Eco to my collection of those pens I just I think I've kind of had enough I I don't think that I need to own any more as a matter of yeah I don't, I don't think I need to own any more I think that I would rather experience different makers pens um, there are so many beautiful fountain pens at all different price points out that maybe that's the direction I need to be going in so um, this Franklin Kristoff is not in my hands as a favorite because of the color or because of the model of the pen. It's in my hands because it is one of the smoothest writing pens that I had um, in my pen collection. I do very much enjoy the um, how it feels in my hands, so that's a perk. If I were buying this new, I bought this pre-loved um, from somebody on Facebook. If I were purchasing this pen for myself from Franklin Kristoff, I likely would have chosen a different color, but I do not mind black. Everything goes with black. So I would say that it's a-okay in my, in my collection as my top, one of my top pens. Let's see if I can get this to focus right. So that is definitely one of my favorite pens. Um, from Pilot, I purchased two Pilots um, since January. One of them was the Pilot Falcon, and I don't mind the Pilot Falcon. It's a wet and juicy writer, but I also got the 912. I wanted to get the 74, and I think that I'm going to be okay passing up the 74 unless they come out with a really cool color for it, because I'm feeling like I've kind of, I kind of get what Pilot is all about. I do love the bounciness of their pens, um, of the of the nibs on paper. That's something I definitely appreciate about a uh, Pilot pen. Um, now having having had a few, this is a soft, medium, fine nib, and it's definitely bouncy. It's delightful to write with. Um, I really love it. I'm not a black pen person. That's the only color that this 912 currently comes in, but I really don't mind it. Like I said, you can't go wrong with black because nothing clashes with it, right? If you're that kind of matchy-matchy or coordinating kind of a person. Um, for my another new brand, so I'd owned for Franklin Christophs before. I had the really long one that's kind of a, a cigar longer cigar shape. Um, and I didn't care for that. I had a short one and I had a long one. I ended up selling both of them very early on in my in my fountain pen hobby days. Um, so when I got this one, I was kind of, I had my eyebrow raised. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember liking those pens very much, but I really like the nib on that one. Um, so this is a new brand, a, sort of a new brand for me, the Franklin Kristoff. Um, the... Pilots were new for me January, I think I picked up my Falcon, and then this one maybe in February. This is a Platinum 3776, and I purchased this off Amazon <clears throat> um, because I just wasn't willing to spend a crap ton of money on this pen without being able to try it. And we have no fountain pen stores in my area that you can walk in and put this pen in your hand and try it and feel it and see what nib you like. So after a bunch of video watching, I, I made my choice on a bold size nib. I knew that I wanted the um, silver, um, silver accents on the pen and I wanted green, which ironically looks a lot like black here, but it is in fact green. Um, and so I went ahead and purchased my first platinum pen and I really enjoy this pen also. Um, it's definitely a harder nib than the, than the Pilot. Um, 
It has no bounds. It has, uh, it's smooth. I love writing with it. It's great. Um, let's see. So Franklin Christoph, Pilot, and Platinum. And then Sailor was the other one that, um, this is actually not a new pen. I've had this one for about a year now, I guess. Either a year or two years. I got this one on sale at Drum Goals. I've got two Sailor pens. I had two Sailor pens. I bought the the um, Pro Gear also. I'm, I don't care for the Pro Gear as much as I like this one. And it's, I don't, it's not for any reason in particular other than um, this was the only one left with this. This is that, um, oh, can I think of the name? I don't know what it is, but it's got the clear cap on it so that you can like see, see through the thing. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's a extra fine hard nib and it's not the most delightful thing to write with but right now I've got it filled with platinum um, black ink and it's my sketching and drawing pen in my art book and it's taking the place of this platinum desk pen which is just a whatever kind of a pen and it's doing a really good job of taking the place of this pen. So it always has that ink in it and it just sits over on a cup on my side. Anyways I digress. Sailor 1911 Anchor Gray found it on sale, tried it, liked it. Um, nice writer, no no complaints at all for as far as a sailor pen is concerned. It didn't necessarily um, like wow that's wonderful, but it absolutely was. There's nothing wrong with it. So those were my favorites in those brands. Um, I'm gonna throw over on this side. We'll put my favorite. Twisby Eco line, Eco Eco T line. Um, this is total vanity. It is because of the color of this pen. I did not buy this pen when it was released because I looked at the color online and said, oh, that's disgusting. Why do I want that in that lineup of beautiful colored pens? This is my favorite. Um, it's got a bold nib on it. It writes wet. It writes smooth, smoothly, wetly, smoothly. Smooth, it's a smooth, wet writer. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the color of it. Um, it. It is what it is. It's not in my mind the same as these pens, but it's an enjoyable writing experience, so I like it. Um, then I have my Lamy All-Star collection, and I have a favorite Lamy nib that I will pull off each pen and put it on the next one that I'm using. It's a black coated nib and it writes very smoothly, a hard writer. Um, so there's that, right? They are what they are again. This is a silver blue color and I was really fortunate enough many, 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 many years ago that I, somebody was selling this on Facebook group. Um, and I grabbed it because I was, I was again, trying to get all of the colors of this. And this is one of my favorite colors of all of the all-star pens that I have. This and the coffee brown, um, for some reason, are the ones that I reach for again and again and again. So, but this is my number one favorite, um, Lamy All-Star. For Caveco, I have a number of Caveco, um, I have two Lily puts, I have three ALs, and I have a bunch of plastic uh, Quebeco Sports. I have one sport that is my favorite. Um, the Lily Puts actually are challenging for longer writing for me. I think they're just too tiny, but they make a heck of a great um, pen to carry with notebooks on the go. My favorite Lamy, or sorry, my favorite Quebeco pen is my unicorn pen of all time. It's one that I looked for for at least a year, if not a year and a half, because I did not see it when it was released. I was on a hiatus from from uh, looking at or being in fountain pen groups or whatever. I was living under a rock, I guess. Had always wanted to find a green pen and missed it and then found it. Um, this is the Paladin Evergreen um, Caveco All Sport. I paid far too much money for this and I don't care. Um, I love, I love this pen. Um, totally for aesthetic purposes, although I can't complain about how it writes either. Again, these three pens are in a different, 
they're not bad writers. They're totally awesome writers, but they're not in the same, they're just not in the same league as these pens as far as um, overall writing experience, I guess. These are more aesthetic. I enjoy this makes, these make me happy when I look at them. These maybe not so much. So these are more about the nibs and the ink and paper, if, if that makes any sense. So getting to where we are today. So this guy is leaving the top of the collection pile and it's because it's been replaced. I'm sure that you all know that the Platinum 3776 comes in a celluloid version and they have, I think, four different, four or five different colorways or, or um, patterns that you can get a celluloid pen in. And I fault Carrie from Pens and Tees, Pens and Tea, because she made a video saying um, she, she loved the Platinums. I was look, that's, that's how this all started. I was doing research on which of the, um, which nib I would want to get and would I want to try a platinum pen. And she had a video up comparing the regular resin bodied pen to a celluloid pen. And she said, oh my gosh, once you have it in your hand, there's definitely a different feeling to it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I would trade all mine in for this celluloid one. I wish I'd never had it in my hand. And so I thought to myself before I purchased this, maybe I should look for a celluloid um, platinum. They're expensive. They are Oh my gosh, they're expensive. And understandably so, if you start looking into um, all of the materials that fountain pens are made out of. But I decided to go with the green resin for the platinum pen. And then I was maybe going to save up money and try to get one of the celluloid ones. And specifically, I wanted to get the tortoise pattern celluloid because I had seen... Um, back when I was looking for that Sailor 1911, so about a year, year and a half ago, I had seen in the one pen person that we have in my general area who s specializes in vintage pens, maybe like repair and um, flipping or reselling. Um, in their shop, they had a Sailor Magellan in a tortoise pattern. And when I saw that pen, it was before I knew about this platinum celluloid and tortoise shell. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's just such a beautiful pen. I think I'm interested in purchasing that. And I was trying to get down to the shop to put it in my hand, see if it was something that I was interested in. I'd never purchased a vintage pen before. So I wasn't sure about, you know, what if I don't like it? You know, is it returnable? Is it under, it's not under warranty anymore, you know? there were a whole bunch of question marks floating around my head. So I passed on that pen and purchased this instead. And I've always kind of been sad about it because um, until I saw some videos about the celluloid platinum pens, how when they made them, you, there's a visible seam in the body of the pen where they join the material together. And on some pattern, some of the pens, I think it's a little bit more noticeable. Some of the, some of the colorways and patterns, it's more noticeable than others. And I knew, I knew after I saw those videos that that was going to bother me about that tortoise, tortoise celluloid pen for the price. I just, there's something in me, you guys, if you're going to spend close to $400 on a fountain pen, it should look, it should look amazing in my opinion. I know that's not the most expensive fountain pen that exists out there, but in my mind, Having a visible seam down a pen that costs $400 with the same nib on it, I believe, as, a, as the less expensive, still expensive, but less expensive resin version, I just, I couldn't. I just, I, 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 I so I started, anyways, long story short, I started looking for that Magellan, so the Sailor Magellan in that tortoise pattern. I started looking for other pens in the tortoise pattern. And while I was searching for, um, I, I think I had some um, uh, notify me if this pops up on eBay, blah, blah, blah. And one day when I was just kind of bouncing around and checking some of those places, you know how like when you search for something and it gives you all of the things that match your search and then underneath it is similar to it searches, this was on similar to it because the seller of this pen had this listed as a sailor fountain pen but they did not know that it was a sailor magellan fountain pen so 
and the pictures were a little bit dark. The tortoise pattern wasn't really noticeable or very well um, featured, I guess, for lack of better words. And it was a, at a decent price. It was at a really good price. And I thought, my goodness, I could have my tortoise shell fountain pen for a fraction of what I was considering paying for the celluloid pen. This is not celluloid. It is resin, but it is beautiful. And I think I'm going to try 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 to win it on eBay. It was up for auction. Um, the gentleman selling, um, I think, had picked up a bunch of fountain pens at an estate as part of an estate and couldn't guarantee that it worked, um, was willing to return it. If it didn't work, um, it's got some issues. I believe it might've been repaired someplace in its lifetime because of the cap. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. The cap seems to have a little bit of a gap, um, between that gold band and the resin. Um, I'm not sure if maybe it came off and somebody tried to screw it back on and just didn't get it twisted tight enough before the glue sat on it. But I thought that that was going to bother me for the pen um, until I wrote with it. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh. In, in fountain pen groups, I'm going to slide these aside for now. So this one has replaced this one is my favorite sailor and this one honestly is at the tippy 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 top list of my favorite pens that i currently own closely followed by this franklin christoph which is interesting to me because neither of these were even on my radar as of like a couple of weeks ago um they were just happy coincidences of somebody selling a pen that i was interested in and i took a chance on it i've seen and I've heard on videos, but I've seen on Facebook groups, you know, the, the people that say, if you want a gloriously smooth mo uh, nib, if you want a super um, flex nib, you need to buy a vintage pen. And I did not want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, this pen, I think, was made somewhere in the late 80s or in the 80s up through 1990s, maybe beyond that. Um, so it's not technically vintage but it's certainly not a new pen um i got it i cleaned it out it had blue ink junked up in the feed and i i had to soak the nib for a while before i got all the ink out of it but when i put it on the paper um when they say that the vintage nibs now watch why i'm going to get a hard start because i've had this out of the cap for a little bit when when people say you need to experience a vintage nib for its smoothness. And I say, ha, huh. you know, I have a Franklin Kristoff that is not a vintage pen and it writes lovely, you know. Um, maybe there's something to that. I don't know if any of these pen companies changed their nibs, their nib materials, their nib making properties or how they did it in between 1990 and modern day pens. But this pen is hands down the most smooth buttery lovely pen that i've ever written with ever 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 i'm gonna get very quiet i'm gonna zoom you in so that you can see and hear what this pen looks like and sounds like are you ready see and i've had the cap off i'm sorry it usually doesn't hard start I'll do that again because clearly I'm not in frame. Move down here. Oh 
This pen doesn't have any flex. It's a pretty, um, a pretty non-flexing, non-bouncy nib, but it is just lovely. Uh, the color of ink that I decided to put in it for its um, first try ever is Robert Oster's Antelope Canyon. Oh, it is, it is just amazing. It's amazing. I don't care if it's damaged and repaired. I don't care if the cap doesn't sit down. It looks okay enough to me to not bother me. Maybe someday I'll look to get it looked at to find out if that's how they were made. I can't find any other online to compare that I can get a close enough shot of um, this resin part meeting the band. Mm. Even if you don't care for this pen, please tell me that you think that it's gorgeous because I am totally in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. So anyways, <laughs> you guys, that's my that's what's going on on my desk this week. All sorts of things that I wasn't planning on purchasing or loving, and yet there they are, and I purchased them and love them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, always appreciate hearing from you down in the comments. Um, I will try my hardest to have something a little bit more interesting and uh, well thought out for the next video next weekend. And until then, I hope you have a really great week. Bye.